Who's next? Well, I think I'll go next. Okay. Uh, as soon as you say that, like I give one step back, like hmm. yeah. not to me. Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> John Jack sits like <laughs> casually. Okay. She watches Turnock for a moment out of the corner of her eye, just amused, and then turns her attention to Jean Jacques in front of her. She smiles. It's a pleasant smile on his face. She smiles as well. Hello. And what is your Hello. name? Hello. My name is Jean Jacques. Jean Jacques. I have a feeling there's more to that, isn't there? There always is. Mm -hmm. Interesting. How's your family, Jean-Jacques? Big and healthy. Big and healthy. I see. Meet any recently? Some. Yes. So what is it you're hoping to hear, Jean-Jacques? Kind of thinks for a moment. Still very casual in his appearance. Is, um, well, I've have a need to get a glimpse into my future. See what options are ahead. Mm -hmm. Perhaps um, where I might find more or less fortune. Okay. Because smiles at the word fortune. <laughs> she she nods, um, but she is definitely less playful, perhaps um, more. She looks more serious, like she did when she leaned into Tan. Mm -hmm. And she con con considers you as a whole. And she stops shuffling the cards for a second. And you see, but only you, Jean-Jacques. To the rest of you, they're just having a conversation. But only you, Jean-Jacques, you see her eyes unfocused from you. And they look to something maybe a meter or a meter and a half above you. As if she could see something towering over you. Mm. Fortune indeed. Interesting. Very well. Shall we begin? Let's. I'm very interested <laughs> to hear what you might have to say. Please make a wisdom saving throw with advantage in your case, as you are a half elf. Yeah. Well, that, and it's also a magical effect, right? Mm hmm. That's a 20 total, but I will choose to fail. <laughs> okay. So for a moment you feel kind of this, this not drowsiness, but definitely an effect beyond natural sleep and, and desire to sleep. Pull at your mind. You steady yourself, and then you allow yourself to get swept away in what feels like an endless current. Not of water, but of air. Just sweeping you away into some distant part of your mind. And in that moment, you hear the sounds around you dim. And you see only now those deep, seem to be very deep green eyes staring straight at you. She sits up. She finishes shuffling the cards. She looks at them. Looks at you. I think... Yes, I think this will call for this. And she immediately places three cards on the table. All three in a line above each other. <clears throat> she first turns around the middle card and reveals an inverted justice. She pauses, grabbing the next card at the top. She look, turns it over and she shows the Emperor. And finally, she turns over the final card, and she shows the High Priestess. She takes a moment to interpret the cards, looking them over very carefully, with more care, in fact, than she had need of to do with Tani, necessarily. But not with particular distress, just pure curiosity, it seems, just to make sure that she gets it all right. <clears throat> she pushes the inverted justice card out of the row to the left and then forward to you. She looks at you and she says, You live a very difficult life, Jean-Jacques. Isn't that true? 
<clears throat> Smiles at her and thinks for a second. Well, not say so. Depends on the individual, but okay. difficult is a word that I could use. As you look at her and you smile, especially when you smile, you feel almost in that exact moment, or almost like a reaction. You see a brief glimpse of a different person. The same underlying features, but with very dark red markings, like war markings almost. And you see a pair of very large, um, sort of fey-like horns that mm. protrude from her. And you have the impression that behind her, her shadow grows a bit, and a pair of wings extends from the shadow as well. But just for a second, just for a brief glimpse, you get this vision almost of what she is, or what she wants you to see. She nods, and she says, You have many different lies that conceal who you are, Jarlak will make this very difficult. The only way into the future, to see into the future, is to be truthful. She doesn't ask you for anything. She simply states it as such. She takes the Emperor. She pushes it a little forward and a little close to the other card. <clears throat> Looking at it again, she ponders for a moment, perhaps whether to even tell you um, but holding two fingers on it she looks at you and she says there is a possibility that you will find stability that you will find a good life but she looks at the justice card again but these two are always at odds with one, one another and you are continuously continuously on this path and she pushes the inverted justice forward the day will come that you need to make a choice but more importantly and she pushes forward the high priestess as well and she says it is about what you believe in and what you choose to believe in that will matter the most that will guide and she pulls it back, and she pushes the High Priestess to link up with both of the other cards. Kind of in the middle a little bit. Mm -hmm. She says, this will lead you to one or the other. But the choice will be yours. I have one more piece of advice for you. Remember that a pawn may always become a king but never the queen. You must always mind her. You blink, and immediately you're back in the tavern. The sounds return. The lights almost seem to come back on. And you've had your reading. Yeah. So I continue with the same sort of disposition. Mm -hmm. To look at her and say, thank you kindly. This was very enlightening I appreciate the work you do you're very kind I hope it helps you in some way it's a difficult it thing it already has and I kind of <clears throat> nod and get up very good I just turn to as he you're standing up or something right you're just yeah, yeah. Up. yeah I just turn to you and I say on your bedside when you're 90 dying of old age you won't be alone because i'll be there for my ale i look forward to it friend but i i think we'll have to perhaps expedite that process somehow because the chances of you being at my deathbed of old age are unfortunately slim the, the half elf pipes up and she says uh, i mean there are other ways to die of old age i know a very very unpleasant ghost that can get you there very quickly here we go. We've had, we have a solution. If I ever get bored, we'll visit the ghost together. 